entitled, How to Successfully Engage the Small to Mid-Sized Business in Your Demand Management Program. A few housekeeping notes we'd like to mention. For best results in viewing this presentation, we recommend using a wired high-speed internet connection, as wireless connections can be unpredictable. If you cannot get adequate sound from your computer speakers, you may dial into the audio portion using the telephone number listed in the right-hand panel of your interface under the audio section. Following the presentation, we'll have a brief question and answer period. You may submit your questions at any time using the interface on your screen. I'm happy to introduce today's panel. We have Praveen Baggett, Vice President of Marketing at Converge. And we're happy to also have Susan Marinelli. She is the DSM Residential Program Manager over at Pepco Holdings. And now I'm happy to turn the floor over to our first speaker, Praveen. Praveen, welcome to the event. You have the floor. Thanks, PJ, and uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, I'm delighted uh, to be part of this uh, discussion today. Uh, it's uh, a topic uh, that I've been engaged in for over a decade, and um, um, along with our utility friends. So um, let's get into uh, the specifics. So the agenda today is going to be about uh, what's the landscape look like, um, the small and medium business, um, what's the, um, how do we define the SMB customers? What are some of the challenges that we uh, face working with, with this segment? Um, what are some of the best practices that we have uh, determined over the last um, decade or so? And then, of course, uh, we'll ask Susan to share her perspective um, in, in, in leading that SMB initiative um, in, uh, in Pepco um, Del Marva Footprints. So with that, um, PJ, let's go to the next slide. So, you know, what we found as we were getting into um, the discussion here internally, we, we said, okay, let's take a look at what are the different programs that exist, how many programs exist. And so we started looking for data, and um, we found uh, some very interesting information on the EIA site, uh, the Annual Energy Outlook in 2015 projections through 2040. And what is interesting is that, you know, there are several thousand utilities, 3,000 plus, and out of those, about 256 utilities um, have a commercial demand management program. And what is interesting is that 60% of those that actually have a DR program um, have less than or fewer than 100 customers. And about 40% or so have more than 100 customers. And then more than 100 customers could be, you know, average is about 2,000. There are very few utilities that have tens of thousands of customers, very few. So we knew that, you know, going in, we knew that this is, this is going to be a challenge. It's a challenge for many utilities to penetrate this segment. And, um, and we found evidence that, you know, spoke to that through this EIA um, report. Um, what is also interesting is that the um, electricity usage for the commercial segment will continue to grow. Um, we're looking at a 0.8% year-over-year growth right through 2040, and the residential trajectory is lower. Um, I think so that's the point of that, that, you know, this is an important segment, um, and it is going to continue to grow faster pace than the residential. PJ, let's go to the next slide. Um, so let's talk about, you know, what are some of the unique um, features and characteristics about the SMB segment. Um, the way we look at the small commercial and medium commercial, there is um, no perfect definition across the utilities. There is a delineation around the 200 kW per month usage level. Some utilities, um, you know, keep it at 100 kW. Uh, but I think for this discussion, we, we define a SMB customer to be between 25 to 200 kW per month, and a medium commercial customer between 200 and 500. Any, any usage above 500 is generally considered um, industrial and CNI segment, essentially. So what are the commonalities and differences between the um, residential SMB and CNI segment? And we started looking at um, 
we started looking at the different aspects that uh, define um, uh, these different segments. And one of the things that was interesting was that the, the time when customers are at home are exactly the time when SMB customers or SMB um, businesses are actually in their business operation, unless it is a small business working out of home. So residential customers is at home, commercial customers are in their businesses. Um, um, re sorry, residential customers are probably sometimes not at home, but SMB customers are generally in their businesses, and C and I, of course, they are. Um, concern for comfort, if you are at home, yes, but for SMB customers, uh, you know, they are concerned about their comfort of their employees and their customers, and of course, C and I customers as well for, for themselves as well as their customers. Uh, equipment on premises for residential is simple. Uh, SMB varies, and I think CNI is more uh, complex. They have uh, BMS systems and such. So uh, SMB customers are, it's a mixed bag. Um, uh, technical knowledge, residential is very low. Small business, generally very low. Uh, commercial customer is a mixed bag. Some have energy managers, and some actually um, outsource that, and some don't have much uh, focus on that. Um, and from a marketing standpoint, what we found was that there is information available on um, segmentation for residential customers, but none of that exists for SMB um, or CNI uh, customers. And we also found that uh, in, mark in um, uh, the primary way of communicating, which is what we consider successful in the residential space, is generally mass market. I mean, um, and we find that that works pretty well. The SMB segment, um, no other channel works other than face-to-face. -face. I mean, that has been our finding overwhelmingly. So if there are utilities leveraging other channels, those will provide middling level results. Um, CNI, of course, is a face-to-face -face channel, and that only works um, uh, with energy managers and, uh, you know, working for the utilities. All right, let's go to the next slide. So this is now getting into um, taking a deeper look, look at you know who are small commercial customers and who are mid-market uh, customers. So 25 to 200 kW are small commercial. Typically, they are restaurants, uh, retail shops, doctors' offices, and such. Um, typically, the offer to the small commercial customers is a simple thermostat or a switch-based offer. Um, there's an annual recurring um, uh, incentive. So, you know, if you participate, you get an annual incentive for participating in that program. So a simple way of communicating with them is generally on a per-device basis. Some utilities offer a free thermostat, and that itself is, a, uh, is an incentive. Um, and of course, typical load targeted here is uh, central air conditioning uh, load, and um, as I mentioned, face-to-face -face is the way to go. Mid-market, uh, 200 to 500, this is a, a diverse bunch. Um, storage facilities, big box retailers, theaters, uh, place of worship, schools, um, shopping malls, uh, strip malls, and all. So I think those are typical um, customers. Um, some office complexes as well are included in that, smaller ones. Um, here also, you know, we provide a free uh, web um, accessible thermostat, installation is included, there is an installation incentive or a uh, recurring incentive. The incentives vary here. Some of them are um, fixed incentives for participating. Uh, they could also be based on a tonnage, uh, based on the tonnage of central air conditioning or on a per kW um, H savings um, that is, um, uh, that's realized by that uh, small business. And, uh, of course, we are talking about central air conditioners, uh, rooftop, uh, HVACs uh, for these, uh, this segment. And essentially what happens is that there are other kinds of loads also available that, um, that are targeted, but that's the primary load uh, that's available. Again, face-to-face -face is the channel of choice. Let's go to the next slide, PJ. 
So then the question is, um, we're doing well in the residential segment. We do well in the CNI segment. Why focus on SMB? Um, and I think what we find is that probably because it is a tough segment to penetrate, the customers have unique um, needs and features, and therefore they don't participate. So typically, not much emphasis is placed on this segment, even though they represent almost 36% of energy usage. I mean, if you see the first uh, pie chart on the left-hand side, that has um, uh, commercial is 36%. And this um, is sourced out of EIA um, retail sales. Um, the other interesting thing is that um, other than HVAC, lighting is the other big component of the commercial um, load. So I think the, the pie on the right-hand side splits out the commercial load. And what we are seeing is that um, you know, those two are almost 50% of, um, um, of a typical small, medium commercial customer's load profile. Um, so what we find is that there's enough load here that if utilities are looking for uh, demand response and demand management programs, they could tap into the commercial segment. Um, by engaging with these customers and helping them uh, understand their energy usage, they'll help them better manage their energy costs. And of course, the regulators want the utilities to get into um, this segment as well. So I think that's important. It's an underserved segment. So you know, there's a lot of, uh, it makes a lot of sense to start focusing on this. Uh, some utilities have both residential, commercial, and of course, some have CNI segment. Um, DR programs as well, but, but focus on commercial is limiting or limited. Let's go to the next slide. So what are the challenges that we find with the SMB segment? Um, one of them is that how do you get in touch with them? You know, there are, um, there are decision makers and you have to get in touch with the decision maker, explain to them what will happen um, if they participate in this program. Uh, they need to be educated, but can you find them? Uh, will they be, you know, if they have multiple locations, where will they be? Who do you talk to? Um, they, and when you talk to them, they have time constraints. They're trying to run their business. Um, and generally, energy for them is an interesting point, but they, they have, you know, their customers and their operational needs to satisfy. So, so that's, the, that's, a, that's a challenge. So that's the reason why targeting them with email or direct mail or social media or such, it doesn't really work. We have not found much evidence uh, in our own experience that that works. Uh, the only way to engage with them is to find avenues where we can um, talk to them in a, um, in a manner that they will devote the time and attention. So look, look for those venues. This, this could be a face-to-face -face communication in the premises where they are or in certain um, place of business where all congregate, you know, Chamber of Commerce and such. That's a good place for them to understand um, what, what the demand response or demand management program is from the utility. As I mentioned, they have competing priorities. They want to run their business. Um, and, and, and therefore, for them, um, talking about a thermostat offer or a switch offer, uh, in some cases, is a nuisance. And so they essentially say, you know, we spent more time with you talking about it than whatever incentive that you're going to give us at the end of the, the year. Um, but I think, to be fair, you know, they have a business to run, so and that's, you know, they're being honest and, and when they say that. Um, and so it, it depends on how the, the whole value proposition is positioned and how you engage with them. That becomes important um, so that they do feel that by listening to the utility representative, it is going to help them save money. It is going to help make a difference. And you know, we're trying to help them. Um, the other thing is that, um, some, to be fair, demand response is not something that typical customers will understand. Um, it's an esoteric concept. And for the most part, a lot of the customers, you know, once they understand it, they understand the value of it. But they don't, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to participate in my utilities demand response program. We have to create a need for that. So education is important. Um, and therefore, it's, it's important that 
the programs that are designed are easy to understand, uh, especially um, they, they, when they are positioned uh, in front of these commercial customers, they say, yeah, this is a no-brainer. I have to participate. It's going to do X, Y, Z benefits. And we'll talk in a bit about that as well. Um, and of course, our customer base is diverse. There are customers um, who speak different languages. And if we are going to engage with them, um, we need to be customer centric. We need to um, talk to them in their language. And, and that's the point that is being uh, made here, that you know, be, be aware of um, what the language needs are um, and simplify the offer and such. Uh, Accenture actually came out with a study um, a year or two ago, and they talked about um, some findings about the SMB segment. And, and one of the findings was that about 52% of SMBs reported that um, you know that they spend more than 10% of their revenue on energy, um, but 87% of all these customers believe in the importance of utility-tailored solutions to them. So the so the customer is there. There is latent demand there for SMBs to get information, get solutions from their customer from their utilities. Uh, it is now incumbent on utilities to take those um, solutions in a bundled fashion to um, their SMB customers. Let's go to the next slide, PJ. Um, this is just a quick um, um, point that we want to make is that, you know, the programs could be switch-based, they could be thermostat-based, um, you could have choice of several thermostats. Now with um, mobility, you have engagement through um, phones, mobile phones. So I think we have done a lot of these small commercial programs across diverse um, geographic areas. And if we, let's go to the next slide. We'll get into the uh, specifics of, you know, so what are some of the key findings um, that we have in this, in this space? Um, I think what we find is that we typically have not been customer centric. We have been, we have a, an offer for the small commercial customer. It is a switch based offer or a thermostat based offer. And we go and push that offer to the small commercial customer. And I think, and that's not the mindset that the utility cost, you know, the small business customer is in. They are looking for a relationship which is more comprehensive, which is more, um, um, holistic, which is the next point, but I think the point really is just because in the utilities we have individuals managing an individual program, which is for demand response, and a separate person managing the energy efficiency program, and a third person managing that, you know, we, we don't have to market these programs discreetly. We can, we can certainly be smart about it and talk to the customers the SMB customers in a holistic fashion. And what we find is that wherever we have gone out and talked to the customers and talked to them in a more comprehensive way, you know, we're going to do a survey. We're going to take a look at what your energy usage is. We're going to do some retrofits. We are going to, as part of that, offer you a thermostat and we'll engage you in this demand response program. When you do that and talk to the customers in a holistic manner, the customer is more willing to listen to you and or the representative. Um, and these kinds of discussions are best had in person. If you send a marketing piece to these guys or, or send an email to this SMB customers, they don't have the time to read this. They have busy lives, and I think most of us on this call would agree to that, that when you're running an SMB, you're responsible for a lot of things, it's too much action. And to be able to pay attention to um, any direct mail or email, they're not going to do it, period. And we see that um, repeatedly in, in, in programs across the country where these kinds of channels are used. So it's almost a waste of money. I, I wouldn't say a waste of money. It's good to let you know, them educate them at a high level, but not rely on those channels to, um, to recruit customers. You can send them to the website. That's a good channel for them to learn about it on, at their own pace. But um, point being that 
let's figure out a way to segment these customers, and we have been able to do that, to segment these customers and say, this kind of customer will need an audit, will need um, retrofits, and as part of that, we're also going to talk about demand response, you know, a thermostat with mobility, we'll give them analytics, give them information so that they can start understanding um, their energy usage. So I think I'll move on to the next slide, but the point really was let's focus on the customer and not what we have to offer. I think that's, that is a 180 degree turn that we need to have. Just because we have a thermostat offer or a switch offer it doesn't mean that that's the way we want to market it to those customers. Okay, so let's talk about the customer psychology. Um, and this is, um, I believe, my um, last slide before uh, Susan comes over. Um, we talked about customer centricity. So we want to make sure that, you know, what we find is when we are able to talk to the customer, the SMB customers, they want to know, um, okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this is going to work for me. Give them a choice. You know, it could be choice in technology, switch, or a thermostat. And within a thermostat, maybe, a, you know, two options or more. You know, give them information on through mobility. Give them a, a way of understanding what they'll be able to do with it remotely or in their premises. Um, give them a choice in cycling strategy. So, you know, some of the hospitality segments are going to be very concerned about participating in a demand response program. So a 30% cycling option for them to get a taste of what demand response is all about is a good way to get them engaged. Once they get engaged, they will decide whether it's worth it for them to upgrade to a different cycling strategy or not. But to have a single offer and to go to them and say, well, take it or leave it, um, no matter how well we position it and how well we talk about it, for the SMB segment, it is always good to have some choices because there will be times you'll not be able to offer them a thermostat. There will be times that a switch option is better. There will be times that this particular segment is very sensitive to temperature change and a 30% cycling option is, uh, is, 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 a, is a better way uh, to do that. And also, in some cases, uh, an offset option, you know, a smaller or um, off offset um, number than um, a typical average one. So those are some of the easy ones, you know, that we can easily say, you know, those are key important elements that should be part of the portfolio of offers. Um, the other thing is that it is, it's important that, you know, this customer centricity begins at the time of program design. It's too late when the program has already been designed. Somebody came in and said, oh, all the utilities offer this, and therefore you, you utility, we recommend you do this. Well, if you take a look around the country, there aren't many utilities who are very successful. So if each utility looks at the other and says, you know, we should do the same, well, you're not going to get, you'll get the same kind of results. I think it's important that this is a point where utilities can start thinking about this in a very different way and start innovating in the way they come up with offers right from the get-go and start pitching them to their customers in a very engaging way, giving them information about their um, energy usage and creating that relationship. Um, the next is, of course, you know, I talked briefly about it. You know, face-to-face -face, uh, is the most important channel in this. It, it may sound daunting because, you know, C&I customers, utilities have their uh, energy uh, advisors or account managers, um, and for residential mass marketing and direct mail works very well. How do you go about talking face-to-face -face with commercial customers? So I think that's where the art of segmentation comes in, you know, knowing in advance who are the typical customers are going to participate in demand response and what kind of offers should be, you know, combined with them and then leaving them with uh, some very compelling information, easy to understand. I mean, for example, if you're offering customers a tonnage-based incentive system, now I can tell you there aren't many commercial customers who will say, I know exactly how much incentive that is. 95% of them will say, I have no concept of what the tonnage is and I have no idea what this mailer says or email says that you'll get ten, twelve dollars a ton. Well, I mean, so I think so. Even though your incentive is going to be based on tonnage because that may be a rational way to think about it, 
But the way you talk about it to your customer has to be different. It has to be in a way that, able, that enables the customer to understand what it means for them to participate. What is their customer experience going to be? What is it that they're going to get at the time of installation, at the time at the end of the year? What are the opt-outs if there are going to be any and how many? And, and, and that whole experience of what else comes with that. So I think let's not just push one product or one service or one siloed way of talking to these customers. Let's engage them in a holistic way and then on a face-to-face -face basis. Um, the utilities also, in addition to cross-marketing, you know, energy efficiency and demand response, the utilities have their PR teams. And they are really engaged. I mean, I think if you talk to the utilities public relations teams, they um, are um, somebody that you can go to and say, you know, this is what we are trying to accomplish in our footprint. Where are these businesses, uh, business owners going to meet? Let's set up uh, a session to educate um, um, you know, those business leaders and developing the communities of um, interest. Um, it could be a chamber of commerce. It could be Hispanic communities. Um, so go into their pockets. Go where these customers are congregating, where they are discussing, and show them how some of their other businesses in, in, the, in the same neighborhood are participating. And, they, and, and that's how they'll be able to learn a little more about it in an informal way, uh, less pressure way, and especially when, since they are away um, from their place of business, they'll be able to listen to it in an open mind, with an open mind. Of course, appealing uh, to a sense of community. Um, you know, a lot of utilities have residential programs. Um, the same customers are also your commercial, small, and, and even large C&I customers. So you know, when you are talking to them about the residential program, you're in some ways also getting them ready and priming them for understanding what that experience will be for the uh, small commercial side. So I think in a similar way, you know, it, it's good to get the community engaged, um, get the local residential customers aware of what the commercial business um, opportunities are, the offers are, and, and they certainly will um, resonate to that. Um, there's a lot being said about green values and, you know, customers are green. And I think our experience has been about 10% of the population, for the most part, is green. The rest would say that they are green, but they may do things that they, whether they, um, you know, publicly um, would admit or not. But I think for the most part, that's the small percentage who live by it. But certainly Accenture did a report, which, you know, and this is a different twist to what I just said. Accenture's report said that 76% of customers are more likely to purchase from businesses certified as green by their energy provider. Um, so this is going after the commercial customers' customers. I think, so from that standpoint, it makes a lot of sense that businesses, when they participate in energy efficiency programs, when they participate in demand response programs, have the bragging rights so that when their customers come in the door, if it's a retail business or whatever, that they can at least, you know, be, um, can proudly display the fact that they are making a difference in the community. And that is important. And I think to the extent that the utilities can partner with the local businesses in either helping promote their business um, and also recognize them for participating in important um, programs like the demand response energy efficiency programs, that recognition helps them do better business or at least be uh, perceived that they are responsible, environmentally uh, conscious players in that community. Okay. Now, let me, um, let me um, ask Susan to um, share her thoughts. If we go to the next slide, um, Susan, um, please take over. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, good morning to everyone on the East Coast. I'm, I, should, I said that backwards. Good morning to everyone on the West Coast, and good afternoon to everyone on the East Coast. My name is Susan Marinelli, and I'm the program manager of PHI's Small Commercial Demand Response Program. I also manage the residential demand response programs um, throughout our Maryland service territory. PJ, next slide, please. Just a quick overview of the discussion today. I'll, I'll talk about, you know, what a uh, little bit about PEPCO Holdings, 
Also, I'll, I'll outline our demand response program. I'll discuss our results to date and then specifically talk about some of the challenges and strategies um, that we're implementing with our small commercial segment. Next slide, please, CJ. Thank you. Um, so Pepco Holding, just a brief overview. We were incorporated in 2002. Um, Pepco was pretty much um, in the Maryland and DC service territory there, and we merged with Connective, which had Atlantic City Electric and also Delmarva Power. So we do serve about 5.6 million customers. Our Delmarva Power service territory also offers um, natural gas service, and we do electric in Atlantic City and also Pepco. Keep this map in the back of your mind as I move through the presentation. You'll see very consistent um, service territory there in the Pepco service territory and very consistent coverage also in Atlantic City Electric. I always joke, um, Delmarva Power, though we serve some of the population there on the eastern shore, you'll see uh, Delmarva's kind of, um, excuse me, uh, Delaware's kind of cut out there to, to the east, and then we have the rest of Maryland there on the eastern shore. Notice how spotty that service territory is. That does play into some of our challenges um, with our demand response program. So just keep that service territory map in mind. It is kind of like Swiss cheese, and there's a lot of munis and, and also small cooperatives that operate in those gray areas that, that we do not serve. Next slide, please, CJ. Here's an overview of our demand response programs. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see the Energy Wise Rewards Program. And as I mentioned, I manage the, um, the demand response programs in the, in the state of Maryland. So we also serve in New Jersey and Delaware and um, DC. So anything that happens in Maryland in Pepco service territory or in the Delmarva service territory, I oversee. Um, our residential programs were launched in 2009. We do um, initiate our events, our, our, our curtailment events, through a web programmable thermostat or an outdoor switch. Either of these products are provided and installed to the customer at no charge. I should note that we, the reason we say no charge is because our demand response program is supported by essentially a systems benefit charge that's managed by the um, Maryland Empower program, which is a statewide initiative to reduce um, energy consumption 15% by 2015. We have had pretty good success with enrolling customers in the residential programs. Um, we, you can see that we've served more than uh, 367,000 customers and have provided more than $50 million in incentives our incentives level are different for the residential program and the small commercial program. In our residential program, we provide, um, or I should say we offer a 50%, 75%, and 100% cycling strategy. And then we have um, incentives commensurate with those cycling levels that go all the way up to $160 for the 100% cycling level. In the small commercial program, we offer a 50% cycling level and we offer a $160 incentive. And so um, that, that is our one and only offer to our small commercial program. On the right-hand side, you'll also see that we offer a program called the Peaks Energy Saving Credit Program. This is our dynamic pricing program. Uh, we just launched in Maryland, um, in the Pepco Maryland service territory, I should say, in 2013. And this is our voluntary um, <clears throat> customer demand response program where we send out a notification the day ahead and customers can take actions to reduce their energy use within their home and then get a credit off on their bill. We provide $1.25 per kilowatt hour reduced and that is over a 30-day baseline period. And so our EnergyWise rewards and our peak energy savings credit offer um, operate hand in hand in both the Pepco, Maryland, and the Delmarva, Maryland service territory. So if we call a uh, curtailment event for EnergyWise Rewards, we will also notify customers that's a peak energy savings day, and then they, therefore they can do other actions within their home to reduce their energy use. Next slide, please, PJ. Here are some of our results from our program. Um, the chart is very busy, so I'd like to just point out a couple key facts. Um, you can see that we divide up this chart into both participant section and devices section. 
So we tend to focus on the participants uh, in our demand response program because that's where we find the peak load contributions. Um, we don't look at peak load contributions at the device level, we look at the premise level. And PHI does bid into the capacity market, so of course, you know, those reductions are important to us. Um, with the residential programs, you can see that we are exceeding our participant goal in Pepco, Maryland. We're nearing our participation goal in Delmarva, Maryland. Um, as I mentioned before, that service territory that you saw that looked very much like Swiss cheese, um, as you can imagine, it's very tough to get two customers have that face-to-face -face conversation with them. Um, we do, uh, as you see at the bottom of the slide, we do a lot of customer education campaigns. We do direct mail and emails. We place outbound calls. We do some door-to-door -door recruitment, and we also advertise. Um, the past two years, we've been advertising in conjunction with the Peak Energy Saving Credit Program. But as you can imagine, it's very challenging to do door-to-door -door recruitment when you have a service territory that's, that's so split up like that. So, We've, we've struggled in the Delmarva service territory with reaching some of our residential customers. But we really are here to talk more about small commercial. Um, you'll see that in the Pepco, Maryland service territory in our business program that we've reached about 26% of our goal. And in the Delmarva uh, business program, we've reached about 35% of our goal. And so you might be a little surprised by that um, given what I just said about the the challenges of our service territory in Delmarva Power, um, we were very fortunate to have an, um, a recruiter who was working with us in Delmarva Power who was able to leverage some of his business relationships in the service territory. And so we found very quick early results by getting some, some small, biz, small medium-sized businesses enrolled in the program. And we have learned lessons from that approach we just haven't been as successful as replicating that in the um, Pepco, Maryland service territory. But we'll get into some of those uh, details in a moment. Next slide, please, PJ. Some of the challenges that we've experienced in the small commercial segment really do echo a lot of what Praveen has already said. Um, you know, time is as a, as a premium. The owner of the business is often the president, CFO, and the dishwasher, right? So, you know, energy bills are not necessarily top of mind. Um, the pictures I have here on this slide um, <clears throat> actually exemplify this. Here is a small pharmacy that is a, um, an EnergyWise Rewards participating customer in our Delmarva, Maryland service territory. Um, the four people you see in these two pictures are the sum total of the folks who work in that pharmacy. We were lucky this year to um, go out and meet some of our small business uh, participants and take some photos of them, you know, uh, engaging. That's our website. You see the woman there uh, has on her computer screen, and you see the staff. We we went out and took some some real live um, shots of our customers to um, help us promote the program. This is part of our brand guidelines. We really do try to have customers uh, demonstrate. Excuse me. We usually try to use actual customers and employees in our marketing and education materials. So this fit with our brand strategy, but I also thought it was neat because we learned a little bit more about our customers who are participating in Energy Wise Rewards through this exercise of getting these photographs to use in our marketing materials. And so here you go. There's four people running an entire pharmacy. You can just imagine how busy they are. Um, excuse me one second. So with that, there's also not necessarily a clear and direct communication path to the decision maker of an organization. Um, you know, you might have someone who receives and sorts the mail, who answers the phone call, and essentially, you know, guards the door. Um, uh, we, <laughs> I, have, I have a story that, that can kind of point to this. We did do some direct mail with the small commercial campaign. Um, we tried to send an oversized postcard that announced both the program and also promoted a 15-minute informational webinar. This webinar basically was, was to help us sort of facilitate that face-to-face -face type interaction and help walk the customer through the demand response program. Um, but 
you know, some of these small businesses, medium-sized businesses, have maybe multiple meters um, at their business. And even though we did scrub our list and try to clean it up as best we could, we had um, some people come, come back and say, hey, I've received multiple pieces of this. And so you do have those folks who kind of, um, you know, guard what is received through the organization and uh, aren't necessarily looking at how that, that business is business operates its energy or uses its energy throughout its operations. Another challenge that we found is that, you know, some businesses, small businesses are in lease space and so they need to get sign off from the leaseor before installing equipment. And then certainly some customers might be very interested in participating, but the facilities that, that they reside in have chillers or other systems that aren't compatible with demand response equipment. So we do have a best practice that we um, do a site inspection before enrolling the customer in the program, and that does help to maintain customer expectations and also, you know, um, more effectively track the workload. But it also does, unfortunately, keep some of our customers who are interested out of the program. Next slide, please, PJ. So our strategy to date, um, what we did was actually segment our commercial customers by business types and looked at those customers most likely to participate. So um, we did have a running list of customers in the program over the last year and a half or so, and we looked at that and said, okay, well, you know, we see that retailers' services like auto shops, dry cleaners, barber shops, also real estate um, rental and leasing companies, um, some healthcare facilities, public administration, and also congregations seem to be the types of small businesses that were participating most in our demand response program. So we tried to tailor our communications and our messaging to these customers. On the bottom of the slide, you'll see two of our direct mail pieces, the oversized postcard I mentioned a moment ago. On the left, you'll see a woman who's a shop owner, and you know she's clearly talking that, that um, lower energy costs are better for her business and her bottom line. And the woman on the right is actually um, a, uh, I can't remember if she's a pastor or a minister, but she is at a congregation. And of course, congregations are always looking for ways to save. So we tried to use these people in our communities um, to say, hey, you know, I'm a business in your community. This is good for me. It could also be good for you. Um, and we tried to target our mailings to some of these some of these organizations. So we also um, hosted the 15-minute Lunch and Learn webinars, and then we followed up with customers who expressed interest in the program. Next slide, please, PJ. And our tactics that we used, you know, we have this running list of direct mails, emails. Um, the piece you see on the right here is actually an advertisement that was placed in um, in one of our local business journal journals. And all these tactics that you see listed on this slide are very tried and true for a residential program, but really did not have the same effect and did not appear to be as strong in the commercial, se in the commercial sector. Our aim for, through all these communications was to build program awareness and also recognition so that if we did have a recruitment agent in the field, the customer would not be completely caught flat-footed, that maybe there would be some cognition of this program existing, but it was also to hopefully get folks to attend the webinar. Unfortunately, we just did not see the attendance to the webinar that we were hoping. Um, we did offer them at lunch, we did offer them during different days, but as we said before, you know, these folks are so busy that even taking 15 minutes out of their day didn't turn out to be too effective, even though we were hoping that that would be <laughs> helpful. Um, so through all these tactics, unfortunately, we really did not see a large uh, increase in enrollment from these efforts. PJ, next slide, please. So our strategy going forward is, you know, we really are going to try to to use more door-to-door -to -door recruitment, and um, we've already started implementing this. Earlier this year, we um, got a very strong direct recruitment team um, established in the Pepco, Maryland service territory, and actually since we've had them in the market, our installations have increased more than 200% over the previous quarter. So 
that just goes to show that really that direct communication, that ability to be in front of someone um, with the program literature, explaining all the questions, um, really helps get customers engaged with these types of programs. Um, we have very strong literature pieces that go out with our, with our representatives, and we also have a strong website where folks can find information pretty easily. Um, we also want to leverage the existing business organizations, so we want to um, be more in touch with our government affairs groups who have those connections within our community, and also any types of business organizations like Chambers of Commerce or you know, nonprofit groups that help support those small businesses in our communities. Here again, uh, some of my photos, this is a, another minister of a church. There's often um, religious kind of a, a almost type of affinity groups, if you will, that you can leverage to contact several congregations at one point in time. And here, the, the gentleman at the bottom, he's involved in a, um, a hotel down on the Delmarva shore. And, show, and so there are many hotel organizations and, and um, leisure and travel groups that you can also leverage to communicate. So we think that getting to the customers through these groups um, will certainly bolster our message and, and get more attention. And another thing that we're also working on is offering the program as an add-on when we're providing customer service and support. So we're very fortunate to have a group of um, key account managers who work more with our large-scale businesses, but some of those key account managers also do kind of get into the medium-sized customer range. Um, we also enter, have energy advisors uh, who serve our commercial clients if there's discrepancies in bills or, you know, things that are going on in, in their organization that they, they want to have something come out, come, they want to have someone come out and look from an engineering perspective on what might be going on. So we've trained these two groups of folks to um, talk to our commercial customers about demand response and offer that as part of the service offering, hoping that that will get some more, some more uh, engagement there. So. Um, Next slide, please, PJ. Um, this does con this concludes my remarks on the PEPCO uh, Small Commercial and Demand Response Programs, and so I'll hand it back over to Praveen for some Q&A. Great. Thank you, Susan. That's great. Um, by the way, it's been a pleasure working with you um, on this uh, segment uh, for the last couple of years, and I think we have had some tremendous learnings as well. Um, okay, so you know while while you were talking, Susan, we have received several questions, and um, let me um, begin by looking at actually asking you um, a pretty relevant one. You covered it briefly, but I think this question came in um, um, as well. You know, talk about a little bit about the barriers to entry for SMB customers. What exactly? Why is it that you know they are not participating? What What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I really would go back to saying that time, time is the most, the most challenging. Um, and I, I think secondly, lease space can, can sort of be a bit of a hiccup too. Um, one of the things that we try to promote is that the customer gets um, a web programmable thermostat for their business and that can help them with op their operations, it can help them save energy year-round because they can you know, program it to their business uh, business needs and they can also if you know somebody forgets to, to reprogram the thermostat you know they can do it remotely somebody doesn't have to go back into the office to change it but to some folks you know they need to get that cleared through their leaser that can be that can be a bit of a challenge um, one thing that I would add that we didn't really discuss discussed too much, but Praveen, you actually touched on it in your, in your piece, was, you know, sometimes the incentives aren't as customizable as they could be, and um, I'm going to tread delicately on that one because this program <laughs> was designed well before my existence, um, but I will say that I have had some customers, you know, who have $11,000, $14,000 bills on a monthly basis, and we're trying to promote this demand response program that offers customers $160 in the first year that they participate, and then $80 each subsequent year that they continue to participate. And sometimes that's just not a strong enough driver, even if the customer is, quote, 
you know, doing the right thing, end quote, you know, trying to be a, a green business. So sometimes that can be um, a little challenging too. Um, but as I say, you know, it, it, it's going to be enticing for, for some and others not so much. And it's at the end of the day, it's up to the business to decide what's right for their operations. Great point. And, and on the same topic then, you know, the question was about, so, so that being the challenge, incentive is not sometimes enough. So what kind of messages work and how do you go about um, engaging with these customers? Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> so, so even though what I just said, this is kind of going to go against what I just said, but we do try to promote that the capital equipment is a business asset. You know, uh, yeah. there are some businesses that that will really resonate with some businesses, and so we try to add. We demonstrate the value of the equipment that we're installing, um, just for all the reasons I I mentioned: energy savings, programmability, etc. Um, and again, for some businesses. Uh, our $160 savings off their energy bill, that will be real money. Um, so I think it's, it's getting, um, it's making sure that those messages get to the right commercial customer versus necessarily getting to, you know, um, uh, a larger, you know, a, a 20 top restaurant or something like that, or a 200 top restaurant where their bills are, are much different. Right, great point. I mean, I think so. Yeah, you know, there's another question I'm looking at that says, um, "Are the financial incentives offered the most only tools um, that are effective in gaining participation in DR programs?" And the answer is, you know, if you segment the market the correct way, for some, as Susan said, financial incentives will matter. For some, they will be um, really um, not material. And as you know, as I shared the example, you know, some will say, you know, I. <laughs> We're, you know, some of the utility incentives, I think in, in your case, Susan, they are still generous in terms of 160 up front and 80 on a going forward basis. There are some utilities whose incentives are even lower, significantly lower than that. And some of these customers will say, well, you know, I, you know by spending 15 minutes with you, I've, I've already spent the incentives that you would give me by the end of the year. And I think, and it's not sometimes that incentive is the only thing that matters. Yes, the, the information that the utility will be able to share with, um, with, the, with these SMB um, customer, you know, that's the kind of offer change that is needed. So if you really want to penetrate this segment, you really need to think about it differently and need to start developing offers that are more meaningful and, and are more customer-centric than, you know, one-off offers that customers wouldn't care about. And I think and that goes to the heart of the matter that, you know, let's not, it's, you should stop doing the same thing over and over again and let's start developing um, new ways to engage with this customer. It could be with, based on combining programs. It could be based on in the information that is provided to them. It is um, working with them and understanding their energy and, and being a partner with, with these SMB customers. They are, they are actually, you know, looking for the utility to take that first step. They're waiting for that. So it's an, it's an opportunity. And I think, uh, you know, those utilities and I, you know, having talked to Susan, we know, you know, the thinking is moving in that direction. So that's, that's great. Um, all right. So there's another question here. Uh, and that I think came right in the beginning when I think I was speaking as to, you know, what's the difference between KW and KWH? I think, and I think in my, um, Upfront remarks: We were saying that a small commercial customer is anywhere between 200 to 200 kW, and I think you know the question relates to you know what is energy versus demand charge, and I think the point we are trying to make here is the customer, the small business customer's energy usage could be you know a couple of thousand kilowatt hours, but at any given point, any given hour, if their peak demand is let's say up to 200. KW, that's when we consider that um, uh, cu customer to be um, a small commercial. So what I mean by, uh, let me, uh, maybe I misstated that, not 200 KW, 200 KWH in one hour. If that was your peak demand in a month, that becomes, um, you know, that becomes uh, the way we define whether this customer is 
going to be segmented as a small or will they go beyond that and go into a medium commercial customer? So I hope that's clear. If not, shoot me an email. We'll be happy to you know, provide some further clarification on that. Um, all right, so I think there's um, one or two other questions um, that I think we need to get to. I know we're getting close to um, you know, the end of the session, and I think um, let me just take a look at this one additional question over here. Um, there we go. So how did you identify target industries, building types? What were your top couple sectors, restaurants, offices? I think we covered that. There was a, um, a discussion on segmentation. There is no publicly available uh, segmentation data. So I think so that is something that each utility is looking at their own customers and you know who what is the engagement score and that's what how we work with um, with Pepco and Susan's team in figuring out how do we target who do we target to Some, for the most part the segments that um, customer types that Susan mentioned are the ones if you have specific questions shoot me an email we can explain to you a little more about you know uh, methodology and and how to go about segmenting it residential segments you know that kind of you know, uh, segmentation data is available. In commercial, we have to do it ourselves. And, um, and that's, you know, how it works. Um, at this point, I think um, I'm going to hand it back to you, PJ, um, I think for the concluding remarks. Thank you. Thanks, Praveen, and thank you, Susan. Excellent presentation. For our audience, we hope you've enjoyed today's discussion. As you log off, please take a moment to complete our survey and give us your feedback so we can continue to provide you with quality content. Thank you so much for attending, and this concludes today's presentation.